Thirdly, Daniel 11, 37 and 38 twice mentions the God of his fathers in reference to Antichrist. Since in biblical terms the fathers represent exclusively the patriarchs of Israel, for example, 2 Chronicles 20, 33, compare Romans 9, 5, of whom that is, Israel are the fathers. This attribution of the true God as the ancestral God of Antichrist, spurned by him, of course, since he is said to have no regard for this God, must mean that Antichrist is of Jewish ancestry, an impression strengthened in Daniel 11.39, where we are told that Antichrist will instead honor a foreign, that is, non-Israelite God, a remarkable thing only if this ultimate king of the north is Jewish. Finally, there are indications from Scripture that Antichrist arises from the tribe of Dan, and that we should therefore understand his maternal origin to be Jewish as a result, and specifically from that tribe. First, Dan is the one tribe not mentioned in the list of the twelve tribes from whom the 144,000 Jewish witnesses are called, Revelation 7, 5 through 8. This omission is striking. Levi, often excluded in lists of this sort, is included instead, with Manasseh and Ephraim called Joseph in verse 8, because of the effective primacy of Ephraim, Genesis 48, 12 through 20, counted as individual tribes. Beyond all argument, there has to be a reason for the divine omission of one of the tribes from this list, and the descent from Dan of the one who will trouble Israel as never before would certainly account for that tribe's lack of representation among the witnesses who will ultimately be martyred by Antichrist. The fact that Judah, the tribe of the coming Messiah, who will destroy Antichrist is uncommonly first in this list, strengthens this argument. The other major prophetic passages dealing with Dan likewise confirm this tribe's association with the beast. Dan, in the person of Antichrist, will judge his people as if he were of one of the tribes of Israel. But Dan, that is, Antichrist, will be a serpent beside the road, a viper beside the path, one who strikes at a horse's heels so that its rider falls off backwards. I wait in hope for your deliverance, O Lord. Genesis 49, 16 through 18. The identification here of Dan as a serpent, always prophetically associated with the devil, needs little elaboration and should not be underestimated, coming as it does in this first critical prophecy about the future of that tribe. In terms of the translation given, it should be remarked that the Hebrew particle CE, invariably comparative in meaning, should rightfully be translated as is it here, namely, as if, for this word never bears the meaning in the capacity of, although this is the interpretation implied by translating it, as many versions do with the word as alone. This distinction is very important, because the natural Hebrew translation given clearly distinguishes between Dan and true Israel, whereas the often found incorrect translation implies that there is no question of Dan's legitimacy being raised here, exactly the opposite of what the passage actually states. Now, since Dan as a tribe is truly and legitimately one of the twelve, we are right to conclude that this prophecy is focusing in upon one prominent Danite in particular, namely, Antichrist. Just as Dan is left off of the list of tribes who supply the 144,000, so in this prophecy of the end times, the tribe of Dan is, temporarily, considered as if it were illegitimate because of its association with Antichrist, an unbeliever if ever there was one, and so definitely not a part of Abraham's promised seed, Romans 4. The principle of a group standing prophetically for a single prominent individual within the group, and vice versa, is well attested in Scripture. Most germane here is the fact that the figure of the beast can stand for either Antichrist or his empire. Further, the reader actually anticipates such a usage in this case, inasmuch as this verse is talking about the overall rulership of Israel, something that must ultimately fall into the hands of a single person. In this respect, it is also important to note that earlier in chapter 49, we find the same usage of a tribe standing for a single prominent individual also in the case of Judah, where the scepter of rulership clearly refers and is looking forward to the ultimate good ruler, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Genesis 49, 8 through 12. Jacob had begun his prophecy by telling his family that he was about to explain what would happen at the end of days, a common phrase referring to the end times 
and specifically to the tribulation, as we have seen. Thus we have here in Jacob's prophecy a clear and deliberate juxtaposition between these two diametrically opposed future rulers of Israel, the Lion of Judah, our Saviour, and the serpent seed, the viper Antichrist, coming from the tribe of Daniel. To return briefly to the symbolism of the serpent representing Satan, and therefore also Antichrist, who mimics his father's methodology, the reference in Genesis 49:16 through 18 to the viper, striking at the heels of the horse so as to unseat the hapless rider, is more than a little reminiscent of the serpent of Genesis 3:15 who similarly strikes at the heel of the woman's seed, the Messiah. Indeed, the unusual Hebrew word for viper used here, shipiphon, is so similar in its root to the unusual word used for attacking or striking in Genesis 3.15, shup, that we are clearly supposed to draw this connection, making it all the more certain that our present passage is likewise meant to be taken as a prophecy of the false Messiah, who will oppose the people of God. Just as Satan opposed Christ, so the devil's Antichrist will oppose the true sons of God. Like a snake, Antichrist will deceive and stealthily attack Israel and all true believers. The fact that the rider in this prophecy falls off backwards seems clearly symbolic of apostasy, and indeed we have already seen how those in Israel who refuse to heed the ministries of Moses and Elijah and the 144,000 will be easy prey for Antichrist as he leads them astray from the right road. Importantly here too, the deliverance or salvation for which Jacob emphatically prays on behalf of all of his descendants, destined to experience that bitter time to come, most certainly casts the activities of the serpent in the previous verses as something that will require a specific divine deliverance of some magnitude. The Hebrew word used here for deliverance or salvation, Yeshua, is the one commonly used for just such extraordinary rescues by the hand of God, for example from Pharaoh and Egypt types of the beast and his kingdom, and is also the word from which the name Jesus is derived, through whom we have our ultimate deliverance and salvation. The ultimate deliverance in this context will come when Jesus himself, the Deliverer, returns to destroy the beast and his kingdom and to save his people from Antichrist's hand. We see this same essential meaning and connection of the tribe of Dan with Antichrist in the other major prophecy of the twelve tribes, the blessing of Moses. And of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He will spring forth out of Bashan. Deuteronomy 33, 22.